Section 3.8, Implicit Differentiation. This is all from OpenStax Calculus Volume 1. At the bottom of every page, there's a link to go to the full text. Please do that. Check it out. Okay? So I like to think of implicit differentiation as the chain rule with y of x. Now, the problem that we come up with and the reason we need this is what if we have a relation that's not a function? Finding the slope of a tangent line is, at this point, impossible. We've, everything we've discussed is in terms of functions. Implicit differentiation allows us to find dy dx when something is, well, not a function, among other things. So typically we define functions in terms of another variable, y equals f of x. This is not always the case, especially if the relation we're given is not a function. It, it is possible to use implicit differentiation to find the slope of tangent lines of any relationship between variables. Here is the general outline of what we would want to do. So example one, given x squared plus y squared equals 25, find dy dx. So first, differentiate both sides. All right, so the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y. And here is our difference. We will have times dy dx. That's why I think of it as the chain rule. Take the derivative of y in there. And then the derivative of 25 is 0. Next, we want to get all dy dx terms on the left and all the others on the right. So in this case, that's fairly straightforward. That would be 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. We'll factor out dy dx if we have to. In this case, we don't have to. And solve for dy dx. So dy dx equals negative 2x divided by negative 2y. Or better put, negative x over y. Now let me show what the gravity is here. The big deal here is that x squared plus y squared equals 25 is a circle with a radius of 5. That is what it is. So if I want to find the slope at a certain point, because it's not a function, there are actually, it doesn't just depend on x. That's what it comes down to. It does not just depend on x. We have to have two coordinates. We have to have an x and a y. So for every given x value, we have two y values. So therefore, we need the whole point. That's why it's negative x over y. We need both of those. So suppose I want to know where the slope on this graph, where the slope is 0, where there's a horizontal tangent line. Well, there are two places. One is the point where at, what is that, 0, 5 and 0, negative 5. Well, if you look at our equation, that is simply whenever x is 0. There happen to be two of those points, but when x is 0. If I want to know where the slope is undefined, that would be these points right here at 5, 0, negative 5, 0, which is where y is 0. Okay, so that is the big deal here. It allows us to do this with, to find the slope when it's not a function. All right, we'll hope we're going to hold on to that, and we're going to use that later, actually. So number two, given x cubed sine y plus y equals 4x plus 3, find dy dx. Well, for the first portion of this, we need to use the product rule. So that would be... I will use this as my u and this is my v. Whenever I take the derivative of something with a y, I'm going to have a dy dx. So u prime v, so that'll be 3x squared times sine y. We did not take the derivative of the sine, so we'll leave it alone. Plus the derivative of sine y is cosine y, so we need a dy dx. We took the derivative of a term with a y in it times, we don't take the derivative of that this time, just x cubed, plus the derivative of y, which is dy dx, equals 4 on the right side. The derivative of a constant 0, the slope of 4x is 4. Next, we want to take a, differentiate both sides. Step 2, get dy dx terms on one side. 
All right, so I'm going to subtract this over. That'll be 4 minus 3x squared sine y. And we have x cubed cosine y dy dx plus dy dx. So do we take care of everything? We move that term, left that term, left that term, move that one. Okay. There we are. Now we'll factor out dy dx. So that leaves x cubed cosine y plus 1 equals 4 minus 3x squared sine y. And now we will divide both sides by x cubed cosine y plus 1, which makes our dy dx equal to 4 minus 3x cubed Oh, that should be a squared right there. Sine y over x cubed cosine y plus 1. All right, and that is our derivative since we have gotten dy dx by itself. Okay, next we want to find the second derivative. Well, first I want to note dy dx. We've found it once already. dy dx is negative x over y because it's the same equation from example one. So d squared y over dx squared will be, using our product rule, low d high, y times negative one, minus high, d low, the derivative of y, is dy dx over low low. The only time we took the derivative of a y term was in the second component in the numerator. Now we happen to know, we happen to know what dy dx is. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that. This is negative y plus x times x over y, uh, negative x over y, over y squared. Now I'm going to clear my fraction here. Let's plug this by y over y. So that d squared y over dx squared is negative y squared minus x squared over y cubed. And that is my slope function given this circle that we have. All right, find the equation of the line tangent to x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 3, negative 4. Now we've repeatedly found the derivative of this function. So this is, we know that dy dx is negative x over y. So if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, first I need to evaluate that function at the point 3, negative 4. So then my slope of my tangent line is 3 fourths. Now y minus y1, so that y plus 4 equals 3 fourths x minus 3. y plus 4 is 3 fourths x minus 9 fourths. Subtracting 4 from both sides, negative 25 fourths. And there's the equation of my tangent line. Alright, number 5. Find the equation of the line tangent to the curve. This curve actually has a name, it's called the leaf of Descartes. Alright, so we want to find the equation of the line tangent to this curve at the point 3 halves three halves. So first we will take our derivative. Taking our derivative we have 3y squared dy dx plus 3x squared minus and I'm going to treat 3x as if it's my u and y as if it's my v. So minus 
derivative of the first is 3y plus derivative of the second is dy dx times 3x equals 0. All right, factor that out. No plus there. Actually, we'll multiply that first. 3y minus 3x dy dx equals 0. Getting all the dy dx terms on one side, all right, and everything else to the other, this will be 3y minus 3x squared. And I'm going to go ahead and factor out my dy dx. That will be a 3y squared minus 3x. And dividing by both on both sides by 3y squared minus 3x, we get dy dx equals, I'm going to factor out a 3 out of everything, and it actually cancels, y minus x squared over y squared minus x. Okay, now evaluating that at the point 3 over 2, 3 over 2, I get a slope of negative 1. A slope of negative 1. All right, all of that to get our slope. So y minus 3 over 2 equals negative 1x minus 3 over 2. 3 over 2, negative x plus 3 over 2, and then adding 3 over 2 to both sides, we get y equals negative x plus 3. And there's the equation of the line tangent. All right, our last question in this section, an application problem. In a simple video game, a rocket travels in an elliptical orbit whose path is described by the equation 4x squared plus 25y squared equals 100. The rocket can fire missiles along paths tangent to its path. The object of the game is to destroy an incoming asteroid traveling along the positive x-axis towards 0, 0. If the rocket fires a missile when it's located at 3, 8 thirds, where will it intersect the x-axis? All right, so to begin with, let's find the derivative of that function. We actually want the trajectory of the missile that it fires. So we'll need to find the slope of that at some point. So the derivative here is 8x plus 50y dy dx, and the derivative of 100 is 0, which makes our dy dx equal to negative, we'll subtract 8x, divide by 50y, and that reduces negative 4x over 25y. Now our slope is dy dx evaluated at that point, 3 8 thirds. So our slope is going to be negative 9 over 50. Okay. Now we, let's find the equation for the trajectory of that rocket. It's going to follow a linear path because it is firing along a line tangent to its path. All right, so this will be y minus 8 thirds equals negative 9 fiftieths x minus 3, negative 9 fiftieths x plus 27 over 50. Okay, and then adding that to both sides. We get y equals negative 9 fiftieths x plus 183 over 200. Okay, now the real question is when or where will it intersect the x-axis? So we need to actually find the x-intercept of this. So let's take 0 equals negative 9 fiftieths x plus 183 over 200. I'm going to clear the fractions. So that'll be negative 36x multiplying by 200. 250 uh, cancels to be 4, so negative 36 plus 183. And the x value is 
x equals 61 twelfths. It will intersect the x-axis at 61 twelfths. All right, well that brings us to the end of this section on implicit differentiation. Remember, every time you take the derivative of a y term, you have a dy dx. It's probably the most important thing in that.